Look out, train. What's going on with the train truck accidents? There have been way too many. Now, of course, we're all aware of the news the last couple of days, 1st of January, New Year's Day, the truck that collided with the train at the Bindara crossing in South Australia, west of Broken Hill. Unfortunately, two Pacific National drivers were killed in that accident, the train drivers, a 57-year-old and a 48-year-old. Very, very sad. When you look at the situation there, and I do not want to throw the driver under the bus or train in this situation, but look at the crossing. That train line had been running parallel with the highway for quite some many kilometres on the driver's right side, his most visible side. So he should have been aware that literally just to the right of the road that he was travelling on was a railway line running parallel. Now where the crossing actually occurs, they've actually realigned the road so that it's not a no narrow X crossing, it's an actual proper 90 degree crossroad. So the highway veers off to the left and then hooks around so it crosses the railway at 90 degrees. Much, much safer. Now it is possible that the truck driver was not aware that the train was travelling behind him and parallel. That is conceivable. But it is very well signposted that there is a level crossing ahead. It does not have boom gates, but it does have flashing lights and bells. Now, I'm not going to speculate on exactly what happened. I don't know whether it was fatigue related, medical related, whether there was some other mitigating factor at play. I honestly don't know, and that's for the courts to decide. But there is no vision impairment there. It is a clear view in every direction. There is no trees, there is nothing blocking your view. What happened? Now, the greatest parallel in recent history, of course, was the Kerrang disaster. In that incident, very similarly, there was a truck travelling at 100 kilometres an hour on the highway, roughly parallel to the railway lines. Uh, although in that particular case, the crossing was a narrower X, so it was more difficult for the driver to see. But then again, the train was coming from the opposite direction, so it shouldn't have been an impairment. There are, or there were at least, a line of trees which is no longer there, which would have partially obscured the train from the driver's vision. Now, interestingly, in that case, although the driver was charged, and rightfully so, because there were 11 people killed and another 23 seriously injured in that particular instance, the driver was acquitted later of all charges and not held responsible for the accident. How could this be? Because ultimately, he's driving the truck. Crossing is signposted. Why was he found not guilty? And that mainly comes down to the crossing itself, the design of it, the fact that it was a known unsafe crossing, where there had been five near misses that year and there had been a fatal accident there in the past. It was a known black spot. The signage and the control of the crossing were not adequate. There were flashing lights and bells, the same as the one that's just happened at Bindara, and no boom gates, just as it is at Bindara. There are several other train accidents that have occurred over the last few years, which I do tend to know a little bit more about because they were either very close to where I lived at the time in Victoria, and also they were trucks doing similar kind of work to what I was doing at the time. And those accidents, I'm talking about the Lismore train crash, May 25th of 2006, the Bar Pimba Pornit train crash that happened just east of Cresey, 15th of November 2006, and the Phelps Road train crossing crash that happened Pyrenealloc near Colac on the 13th of July 2016. Cresey and Pyrenealloc crashes both involved passenger trains and thankfully there was no one killed. On the Colac one, the driver was airlifted to Melbourne Hospital, but of the 100 odd passengers that were on board the train, 18 had minor injuries and there was one critical injury. Now, that driver was also acquitted and found completely not responsible for the accident. In that one, it was a stop sign, no lights or bells. He came to the stop, he stopped, he looked both ways, couldn't see any sign of the train. The prime mover crossed over the lines and the trailer was struck by the train. It was fully loaded with canola. He'd loaded out of Melbourne earlier that day as a V-double, dropped his A-trailer at the depot in Colac and then it proceeded to a farm to unload the V-trailer. 
I uh, didn't quite make it to the farm, unfortunately. The Kersey accident, another interesting one. Happened on the Bapimba Point Road. The driver of the truck was heading north towards Dolorat. And the road runs about a 45 degree angle up towards the train line. And then at the last moment, pivots to cross the train line at 90 degrees and then comes to the highway which runs parallel to the train line. Now that driver had the train on his left, which was his blind side, and was travelling at an acute angle to the line, so wouldn't have been aware it was coming. Having said that, the crossing did have stop signs. If he'd have stopped, he'd still be alive today. Unfortunately, he didn't, and he's not. As you can see from the photo, the train literally took the cab clean off the chassis. Paul Baker didn't have a chance. Now, thankfully, that train did not derail and there were no injuries on board. But I know that one quite well because it wasn't too far down the road from where I used to live. I was actually at the scene about six or seven minutes after it happened. The Lismore disaster, on the other hand, had other mitigating circumstances. Now, in the driver's defence, his name was Jamie Webb, who was from Wedderburn, and he was travelling south on the Skipton Road, crossed the Hamilton Highway, and was heading south to deliver a load of orange pulp for stock feed. It was a early morning, it was extremely foggy, and again, living in that area at the time, I'm fully aware of how foggy it was. In fact, my old house used to be just over the railway line at Duverney, only a matter of kilometres up the rail line, and that particular morning, it was so foggy, you actually had to stop at the crossing, turn the engine off, listen, wait until it was silent, and then quickly turn the engine on and go because you could not see at all. And this is probably what happened to Jamie. Now, some will say, if it's that foggy, you should be driving the conditions. You shouldn't be driving beyond what you can see. Now I understand that, but I think as most truck drivers will attest, that's not always an option. We still have time limits. We still have deadlines. We still have places we need to be. And I think all of us, at least at some time, if not most of the time, do drive beyond our limits or beyond our visibility. I'm not saying that's right, but it's the reality. Now in that one, the driver had come to the highway at Lismore. He had done the little turn right, turn left dog leg, and he was now heading down towards Camperdown. Now that particular road converges with another road that comes out of Lismore, just over the railway line. There are two crossings, obviously. The one that Jamie was heading to had, at that time, a giveway sign. I think it was a giveway sign one direction and a stop sign the other. But either way, no lights, no bells and no boom gates. To his left, only a couple hundred metres, was another crossing for the other road that was converging. That one had bells and I think boom gates at the time. The people who live in the house just close to that crossing actually said that they could still hear him accelerating coming off the highway when he hit the train. The poor bugger had no idea that there was a train coming. In fact, he probably had no idea there was a railway line there. So the other four I've mentioned, two truck drivers are dead, and the other two were both cleared of any responsibility, including the one with fatalities. It'll be interesting to see what happens to the 75-year-old truck driver involved in this accident at Bindara in South Australia. I can't see any mitigating circumstances. I can't imagine how it will be defended but it'll be interesting to see. Now, at the end of the day, whether there are mitigating circumstances or not, level crossings in Australia are just a fact of life. They are everywhere. We have a very extensive road and rail network in Australia, and level crossings are just part of the landscape. You can't avoid them, they're everywhere, particularly in Victoria and also South Australia. But all the states have this issue. And I would argue that as a truck driver, and as truck drivers, we are responsible. Ultimately, at the end of the day, we are the ones driving the truck. We are the ones responsible for our own safety and the safety of everybody else. Now, all of these crossings were signposted. All these crossings, whether adequate or not, did have signage. It's our job as truck drivers to be aware of our surroundings, drive cautiously, drive to conditions, and drive in a responsible manner. Nobody lives the perfect life.